the first thing we need, need to do to find the inverse algebraically? Tell me what's right. What do you do next? Arrows and circles, super helpful. Keep going, Chen. Thank you. Jesse A? Say, say that again. Uh, we're trying to get this Y by itself. Did I show you guys my pen dash trick? I guess it doesn't work with this case, huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, it could still work. Because <laughs> normally I would tell you go from bottom to top, right? Because you're trying to solve, but then there's no adding and subtracting, so I'm trying to make my system work. Y over 6 minus 2, 6. Okay, Jesse, now if you're using uh, PEMDAS going backwards, what would you do next? Um, what does the A and S stand for? So you're going to add what? Two sixths. Jesse, what's left? So we're adding those, right? So you can't put them together. And what's left on the other side? Hmm. Pablo, what do we do next? We're trying to solve for Y. Multiply by 6 on both sides. So we did adding and subtracting, now multiplying and dividing. Look at this. The whole left side times 6, the whole right side times 6. <coughs> Pablo, what's left? So on this side, what do you notice about those sixes? Yeah, canceling in this case equals one. So we're just left with the y. Pablo, go ahead and distribute. How do you make six a fraction? You just multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. Multiply the top. 6 times 2, multiply the bottoms, and just simplify that. So now I have the inverse of x is equal to 6x plus 2. Question? Can I, I just did like the over x so I just made the 6 minus, uh, equals y minus 2, that's what I did. What did you do? I didn't do the addition and subtraction first because this is division, so I... Put just multiply by 6, yeah. Raise your hand if you just multiply by 6 on both sides. Did we get the same answer? Yeah. yeah. Isn't math so wonderful? 
So you see division. Another way of doing the problem is just multiplying both sides by 6. Okay, watch this. I want to show you guys some magic. I'm going to do this really fast, okay? Let's just say I told you to take the inverse of this. You would do y equals 6x plus 2. And then you would switch them so you get x equals 6y plus 2. And then you would subtract 2. You don't have to copy this down. Just watch. And then you would divide by 6. You get x minus 2 over 6. Isn't that the original answer? Mm -hmm. So essentially the inverse, you're just working kind of inversely, backwards. I don't hear any crickets. Okay. That's another observation. Let's look at our calculators. Let's graph that. So into the first function, I'm going to put in x minus 2 over 6. Calculator command you can use is alpha y equals. What are you pressing? Alpha y equals. This gives you the n divided by d. Numerator divided by the denominator, so I'm going to type in x minus 2. Common mistake is putting a negative 2 there. And then I have the 6. That's just the original function, right? And then on the second function, y2, I'm going to put in the inverse, 6x plus 2. And then in the third one, I'm going to put in y equals x. That is the uh, reflection line. And now I'm going to press zoom 6. Here is the original. There is our inverse. And that is the reflection line. So, how can you use the graph to check your answer? You do it algebraically, and then you can graph these two and realize that it should reflect over that line. Let's see if I can do that. Kind of. Maybe up here. Does that kind of make sense, though? What's happening? It gives you at least an idea, okay, like I should be directly over that point. Get in here. Class, what's the first thing we need to do? So it's going to say y equals 4 minus 3x. Alright, what's next? Um, switch no, the x with y. Switch these. So I have x equals 4 minus 3y. Here, x equals 4 minus 3y. What do I do next? So we're going to solve for y. x minus 4 equals negative 3y. Divide by negative 3, and the inverse is going to equal, uh, these will cancel. Okay, over here, you never want to have a leading coefficient as negative. You guys see this? It kind of looks weird. So we normally put this negative sign out here in front of the fraction line. So mine's going to read the opposite of x minus 4 divided by 3. So I'm going to put that negative sign out here, and I have x minus 4 over 3. Do you see how it's still dividing by negative 3? Do you see that? Alright, so here are my two functions. Obviously, I don't have a rational, so I can just, uh, I don't have to worry about asymptotes. So let's go ahead and graph this. Class, what type of functions are these? They are linear. So 
So here I have my starting point. My starting point is going to be, uh, this one's not written nicely, but if you did, right? So 4 is your starting point. And where do I go from here? Down 3, 1, 2, 3. There's your graph. Uh, Raise your hand if you have that so far. All right, if I graph this one here, um, you can put that negative back into the front. So this is going to read uh, negative one third x. You just put a coefficient of 1 right there. And then that's minus 4 thirds. So I have negative 4 thirds. And I still have um, negative slope here. So my rise can be negative 1 and a run of 3. So down 1, right 3. And this is what my graph is going to look like. Alright, now we're going to do the domain and range. Class of domain is uh, from left to right, negative infinity, towards what? Positive infinity. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this problem. Class, what's the first thing we need to do? So it's going to say y equals 4 minus 3x. Alright, what's next? Um, switch no, the x with the y. So we're going to switch these. So I have x equals 4 minus 3y. Here. X equals 4 minus 3y. What do I do next? Solve for y. So we're going to solve for y. X minus 4 equals negative 3y. Divide by negative 3. And the inverse is going to equal. Uh, these will cancel. Okay, over here, you never want to have a leading coefficient is negative. Do you guys see this? It kind of looks weird. So we normally put this negative sign out here in front of the fraction line. So mine's going to read the opposite of x minus 4 divided by 3. So I'm going to put that negative sign out here and I have x minus 4 over 3. Do you see how it's still dividing by negative 3? Do you see that? Alright, so here are my two functions. Obviously, I don't have a rational, so I can just... Uh, I don't have to worry about asymptotes. So let's go ahead and graph this. Class, what type of functions are these? They are linear. So here I have my starting point. My starting point is going to be, uh, this one's not written nicely, but if you did, right? So 4 is your starting point. And where do I go from here? Down 3, 1, 2, 3, right. And there's your graph. Raise your hand if you have that so far. 
All right, if I graph this one here, um, you can put that negative back into the front. So this is going to read uh, negative one third x. You just put a coefficient of one right there. And then that's minus four thirds. So I have negative four thirds. And I still have um, negative slope here. So my rise can be negative one and a run of three. So down one, right three. And this is what my graph's gonna look like. Now we're going to do the domain and range. Class of domain is uh, from left to right, negative infinity, towards what? Positive infinity. And what you just did there is the inverse. The inverse undoes undoes. Which one's correct? Undoes. Sounds weird. <laughs> do you guys see that? What do you guys notice? <laughs> They're opposites. Right? You're taking the inverse. You're just going in the different direction. So here are multiple representations of the inverse. Now, one we didn't talk about before is also that it mirrors. Kind of hard to see. If you go back up to the graph and you graph the line y equals x. Let's write that. Y equals x. And if we had a graph down the same graph, like if you did on your calculators, you realize that it's actually reflected over this line here. So graphically, I'm kind of showing you what an inverse is. I'm showing you the domain and range. Your domain and ranges are switching. And then you're actually doing the inverse or opposite um, operations. Molly, what's the first two steps? Okay. So class, instead of writing f of x, what do we write? We're going to write y equals negative 3x plus 2. Stephanie, what did she say was the second thing we needed to do? Let's switch x and y. I would highly recommend, everyone say arrows. Say it. Show arrows. So when I teach like a trig class and more difficult things, if I say what the inverse was, hopefully I would just say show your arrows. So now what do I write? X equals negative plus two. Hey Zeus, what's step number three? Partner A, tell partner B, what's the first step? Divide by negative 3 or subtract 2? Class, what should we do first? We are going to remember PEMDAS. There is no fraction line, so we're going to do add or subtract first. And if you're not sure... Just choose your own adventure, do it. Like if one person did one, the partner B did the other way, you would have two different functions, right? And you can graph it and see if your order pairs are correct. Okay, let's now solve for y. What else do we need to do? 
add or divide. So I now have y equals x minus 2 over negative 3. Let's make this into slope-intercept form. Class, what's the number in front of x? What number is that? So what's the fraction? Positive divided by a negative? Negative one-third x. This is the same thing as this. Okay. What do you get when you simplify that? Positive two thirds. So here's the original in orange. Class, what's the last thing I forgot to do? Um, go back with f of x. And it is now the inverse. All right. How do you start graphing the orange one? Where do you start? Two. Put your finger where the two goes. Which intercept class? The y-intercept. Y-axis, this is the y-intercept. Raise your hand if you got that. Okay. Put your finger on slope. How do you make that a fraction? This is rise. This is run. With your partner, I want you to use this language. Left, right, up, down. What does rise of negative 3 and a run of 1 mean? Tell your partner. 10 seconds. Are you going to go right 3, up 3, down 3, left 3? Class, rise means what direction? Up or down? Or left and right? Up and down. So what does a negative mean? Down three. One, two, three. Run. Up or down? Left or right? Left and right. Run of positive one. Is that going to go left or right? right? To the right. If I'm teaching you this the very first time, like you have no idea. This is the elevator at the mall. There's no escalator. There's an elevator up or down. And then when you run to the store because there's a sale, you go left or right on the same floor. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that. You guys remember that was the most basic graph in polynomials. You had a negative leading coefficient. It should have started this way, but it switched because of the a value. Does that make sense? The last number without a variable, that's your y-intercept. All right, let's graph the purple now. Class, where am I starting? Positive 2 thirds. Put your finger on it. I would say less than one. So we can do a better job soon. Okay. Alright. This is a little bit confusing on the slope. The negative, when you write it, is actually in the same line as the fraction line. Do you see this? So you get to determine which one is negative. It's not wrong. So you pick one. Do you want the top or the bottom? 
Top? Okay. Partner A, tell partner B, what does a slope of negative 1 over 3 mean? Use the words left, right, up, down. Green chairs, what does a rise of negative 1 mean? Down 1. Blue chairs, what does a run of positive 3 mean? Which direction? Right, something like that. My purple dot. That is the inverse. So if you wanted to label it, this one is orange, f of x. And this one is the inverse of f of x. So this was orange. And this one's the purple. And then if you graph the line, y equals x. And if you had a mirror to check it, mirror, come to me. Yeah, I didn't do a good job drawing my line. You like up here, huh? But you get the idea. So to do the problem so far, we've replaced f of x with y. We've interchanged uh, the x's and y's. Use arrows, very helpful. Now I'm going. Now we're currently solving for y, so I multiply both sides by two, and I'm subtracting five. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative three. Whoops! Just a negative three. All right, let me zoom in. This where students had a little bit of difficulties understanding the fractions. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is just y. Here, I have 2x divided by negative 3, which is what class? Negative 2 thirds x. And how about this one? Negative 5 divided by negative 3 is? plus 5 thirds. Remember, to understand what we just did, it might help to go backwards. Because I have a common denominator, um, that could be like a negative, uh, and then you would have negative 3. So you're kind of combining them, common denominator, then you add the numerators. Negative 2x minus 5. Okay? And then step number 4. Mary Grace is my hair. Erica, number four. Replace. Say it again. Replace y with. Okay. The inverse of x is just saying this. Everyone say inverse of x. When you see a negative 1 there, it's not an exponent. We've talked about it the other day. It just means the inverse. And then I can just write this. <coughs> and this is our answer. So in this problem, change it to a y, switch, solve for y and then put back the inverse of x. All right, let's graph the original. 5 halves minus 3 halves x. The student, not paying attention, thinks that this is your beginning point. It's switched. Do you see it? This one has the x. So 5 halves is 2.5. Put in your calculator. between 2 and 3. From here, 
I'm going to go down 3, right 2. There's my orange line. I know that's correct because it has a negative slope going left to right. Purple. What's the y-intercept? Five-thirds. One and two-thirds. One point six seven. One dollar sixty-seven cents. From here, you can assign the negative wherever you want. I'll just go negative two over three. Down two. One, two, right three. Now this one barely shows that they're re barely reflecting over the inverse line, which is y equals x. There's my graph. All right, so we're trying to find the inverse of these problems. And before we do that, let's go over some steps here. Nathan, step number one. Um, um, replace f of x with y. I would write that in my formula sheet for the next quiz or test. Melissa, number two. Interchange x What's another word for interchange? Switch. Switch x and y. Thank you, Melissa. Alonzo, number three. Solve the resulting equation for y. Solve for y. Get y by itself. Kayla, step number four. Change x to y to the inverse of f. Okay. Sebastian, what did you hear? Tell me that's right. Okay, now what? Remember, it sounds silly, but circle it, arrows. All right, Sebastian, what do we got? All right, tell me what, what, what should the next line look like? You're not, you're switching the X's and Y's, right? I want to point this out to you because this will be super helpful second semester when we're doing the trig problems, okay? When you're doing the switching, it's like an on and off switch. To show that you did the switch, you're going to actually put the inverse here. That negative one. <coughs> Thanks, Sebastian. Cindy, what do we do next? Divide by 6. What do I got, Cindy? One six. I like that. Equals? Ellie, are we all done? Where did I go? Anyway, yeah. Everyone say inverse of F. Inverse of F. Don't say F negative one anymore, guys. Annalie, how do you say that? Equals what? One over six x. And that's our answer. Raise your hand if you got that. So that was a linear, right? Orange shares. Let's graph the orange. Red and orange shares. Where is my starting point? Zero. M x plus b. The constant has no x. Another trick is thinking B for begin. This is where you begin. Red and orange shares. What's your slope? 
Is it the zero or six? Six. How do you make six a fraction? Is six the rise or the run? And the one is? All right, let's help students who are struggling. Red and orange chairs. What does it mean to rise six? Up, down, left, or right? Up, six, and right of one. Left, right, up, or down? Right, one. Good job, Milton. Let's go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Run of one, right one. There's my point. Someone asked me this is a lighter sketch for the original function. Your slope is positive. When we're talking about leading coefficients, A values for polynomials, this is what it looks like. All right, blue and green chairs. Let's graph the purple. What's my y-intercept? Thank you, blue and green chairs. It is zero at the origin. How do you interpret slope, blue and green chairs? Rise of what? And a run of? Uh, blue and green chairs. How do you interpret rise of one? Nice. It's a positive value, so you go positive on the y-axis. And then run of six, that's left or right, it's positive. Positive values are going towards the right. Let's graph that. Up one, run of six. Let's label these. This is my inverse. This is the original function. And it's reflected over what line? Huh? What is this one called? Y equals X. Tell me that's right. Brian, instead of writing f of x, what are you writing? So y equals... Yeah. Jonathan, what do we do next? Yeah, you're Jonathan. Oh, we have two? Jonathan H. Tell me that's all right. Uh, Raisin. He says subtract what? She says subtract one. Thumbs up, thumbs down? That's correct. Temptation pi would have been divided by negative 3. Raising what's left? Notice how if you put negative 1 over here, then plus x would not be wrong, but variables first are better. Yave? All right, what do we got? 1 over 3x? Yeah, wait, look at this. This is the negative one third, correct? What's this one? 
positive one third. If you guys need an in-between step, it's x over negative three plus a negative one over negative three. Does that make sense? And then all we have to do is make sure it says the inverse. And that's our answer. Three examples, two linears. Polynomial is another example of taking the inverse. All right. <coughs> I notice that the original has a negative slope. So it should look something like that. Going through one, down three, run of one. So that line looks okay. But I only have one line. Ooh, you all want to drive. This is called what? Don't hit the curb. Parallel parking. Okay, parallel means they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Same slope, but different y-intercepts. Yes? No. They would have to have the same slope. All right, let's take a look at this one. Positive 1, down 3, right 1. Huh? 1, 1, oh, oh, oh. Do you guys see it? This is 2, this is 1, so they graphed it at 1 half. Are you following? Or 1 third? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I was like, this is the inverse. So they're saying that this graph is this one. Okay? They wrote, huh? Start at negative three. Oh, do you guys see where they got stuck on? They thought the second term was the y intercept. They thought the second term was the y intercept. The y intercept is the constant or the number, which is what number class? One. You start at 1. Let me, where's mine? Uh, let's do this correctly. Let's graph. This is positive 1. over 1, down 3, right 1. My slope is negative 3. Slope is in front of x. That's how you know where to find it. It doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right. So it's negative. So rise of negative 3, which is down 3. Run of 1 is right 1. Down 3. 1, 2, 3, right 1. One, just like the first person had it. Use a straight edge. This is f of x. Okay, let's go now to the other one. One third, to help you with number sense, is you can write that as... 0.33 is a decimal, like 33 cents is between zero and one dollar, like right near closer to one dollar, uh, zero dollars. And then a negative one third, remember you can assign the negative wherever you want, so let's say I put it there, so that would be down one, right three. Down one, rise of negative one, so down one, and then write three.
And how do you know that this graph is correct? We're going to learn later how to verify them algebraically, but for right now we can kind of just tell that the points are being reflected over y equals x. M is for measurement units. A is for complex algorithms. T is for translations, transversals, and trapeziums. H is for the height of any shape that you desire. And math is all that is surrounding you. Math is so much more than two plus two you can understand it take that number and divide it math was made for me and you